All right, so I want to share a couple of different ways that you can loop video in Storyline. So uh, we'll begin with the probably the most common, the easiest, fastest way to do it. Then we'll look at a new trigger, the jump to time trigger that came out recently that also can help. And then we'll look at a couple of nuances here. So I have this video on my slide. It also happens to be a five second video. And I just want to loop this video when the video reaches the end of the timeline. So by default, if I come up here to the options tab, you'll see that the video is set to play automatically which is what the default setting is. So I'm just going to work from this to begin with. What I wanna do, I wanna create a new trigger. So over here in the triggers panel, we wanna pop open the triggers and we want to play media and we wanna play the media, which is the video that we have right here on the slide, video one boat.mp4. And we wanna play this when, when what? When the media, when the video or media completes. So we just need to come down here to media completes in the triggers. That's actually a trigger that's been around since storyline one. So we're gonna say when media completes and then which media, the video one media, and that's it. So let's go ahead and preview our slide real quick. And I have the seek bar on down here and you can see as the, when the timeline ends, it should restart and it just keeps playing over and over again. Now, notice real quick that as I mouse over the video, you can see my cursor change to the hand cursor that lets me pause and resume the video. You may or may not want that. So if you don't want that interaction with the video and you have the video playing automatically, what we recommend is just to insert a hotspot over the video. So I'm just gonna grab a hotspot, another hotspot, and just put a hotspot right there. It's just a green overlay. And what that'll do is create a barrier between you and the video. So when you mouse over the video, you won't see the hand cursor. There is one more thing we need to do, and that is to right click anywhere here on the, on the hotspot. And we want to disable show hand cursor because by default, that's also showing the hand cursor when you mouse over a hotspot. So I'll just click that, deselect. I think I got it. Let me come back over here. Yep, show hand cursor on hover is disabled. And now when I preview the video, I won't be able to interact with the video you can see there's no difference here when I move my cursor over the video or away from it. Okay, let's take a look at another way that we can interact with the video, and that is with a button click. So I'm gonna come right here, and this time we have the same setup that we had before. I have a video right here. If I come up to options, I'm gonna change the play video from automatically. This time I'm gonna change it to when triggered. So when triggered means is that we'll actually have to add our own custom play button to make the video play. So it won't be dependent on the timeline. That's fine. Come up here to the insert tab. I'm just going to get a pre-built button. Just drop that right here and I'll say play. And now I need to add two triggers. One trigger to play the initial video whenever, whenever the learner wants to view the video and then one to just keep that video looping. So a new trigger here first. So we'll say play media and then the media will be the same thing, the boat. And it, the when is when user clicks that, that button one that we just added. So that'll play the video whenever we click the button. But right now it's not set to loop. So we do want to add that second trigger, just like we did before, to play media. And again, we select the same media, the video one boat. Not when we click something, but this time also when the media completes. So the same media is that video one. So this time, because we are triggering the video with the button. Notice how my cursor doesn't change over the over the video either. So the video is not clickable. It's not interacting with the mouse. But when I click play, same thing. I don't have any interaction here with the video. So the video is playing now. It's independent of the timeline. It's going to play that five seconds of the video or whatever the duration is of the video. And then it's just going to keep looping. Now there is one other option was well, more options, but another kind of main option is we recently added a jump to time trigger. Now, in this case, it's probably not how I would really loop a video in most cases, but it's worth knowing about this trigger and you can see some ideas for uh, ways this would work. So the way it works is, same thing as before, I want to play the video and we'll just say we'll play it when, when the timeline begins. So automatically add a new trigger. And this time we'll say, let's use that new trigger, jump to time or cue point. So we could have either a specific time or a cue point on our timeline. So I'm just gonna say, jump to time and I'll say zero seconds on this slide. So it's gonna jump back to the very beginning of the timeline when, and then you say when, when the media completes and that video, that media is gonna be video one. 
So the difference here is we're not really resetting the video at first, we're resetting the timeline and then we're replaying the video. Now the one option that we do need here is we have to enable play timeline because what will happen right here is it'll just reset the timeline back to the beginning but it's not going to automatically play. So we can choose to play the timeline right here and we'll play this one more time. And you can see also the cursor is over here so I would need to put a hotspot on that but when the timeline ends it jumps back to the timeline and then also plays that timeline. So this is all happening right here in, uh, tied to the timeline. You can see if I move that back and forth it's tied versus if we play this independently then you'll have the video separated from that. So just a couple ways that you can loop video. Real quick the same process works for audio files. I don't have any audio files on this project but if you had audio the exact same process is going to work because you're still using the play media. You're just using a audio file over a video file. Okay, hope that helps.